will take off in August, and I'm now working on the schedule for next year, and just a few items that we're working on. Sandy Baskin, who's a member, will spend a night in October evoking a walk through downtown Squirrel Hill. Uh, he is a very good writer, some of you may have done some writing, and he's just going to act as if he was there and take us through a, a, a walk downtown. Um, we are hopeful, and in fact have some representatives here tonight from Giant Eagle that now has a historic section to come and talk to us <coughs> in the year. Um, I have discovered that uh, Barbara Burston, who wrote Steel City Jews, is a member of our group, and I'm trying to persuade her to come and talk. And um, also, it is the uh, 100th anniversary of the Mary Brown Church. And what they came to speak about three or four years ago, but they're going to come back sometime in the first half of the year. And there's some other things in the works, but uh, sometime in August we will announce a full schedule for the spring. Uh, tonight, uh, one other thing, we had a marvelous walking tour at Chatham the other day. And we had nearly 20 people there, and they just did a fabulous job. They, we are giving, we are giving a, uh, a donate, fairly substantial donation to Chatham. We have the money, and although they got a lot of the pictures for the, for our Squirrel Hill book, we've never really given any sort of donation. So we we're going to be doing that, and we will do the uh, Chatham tour again next June. Just those of you who've never done that, we'll uh, we'll have that available. Uh, I think that's all the announcements, and I'm, unless there's some questions about scheduling and stuff. Some of you are not members. We have membership forums in the back. If, uh, if you would care to join, we would like that. And now, Betty Conley, a lot of you know her, but Betty was the lead writer in our Squirrel Hill book, and uh, has been a member from the beginning of this organization. And Betty is going to lead a discussion on schools in Squirrel Hill tonight. Thank you. And thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, let's see. I'm going to start with a couple of disclaimers. One is, I did not go to school in Squirrel Hill, but, but <coughs> I think that the people who went to school in Squirrel Hill have a really rich treasure that if we can get the community to know more about it, it, it enriches our community. So that folks are, are really who went to school in Squirrel Hill are really a part of that history. And my second disclaimer is I'm not a moral historian. I, but I do think that people talking about what happened to them as they grew up in the area where they are is vitally important. It gives roots to the whole whole place. So and we've got a format for tonight that's going to end up very, very casually. Betty has a fairly soft voice if you're having hearing yeah. problems. Either come Brent. closer or I'll try to get yeah, back and then we'll go we, we need the air conditioning on. Well, our format is going to be a little bit of the history of the local schools. It'll be like the hard historical side. Several of our schools have very long historical backgrounds. We'll, we'll look at them. And then, since everything here is going to be part of our oral history collection, per se, we're going to do a verbal release of everybody. And that's when Audrey is really going to start running around and taking your picture. Some of you don't know this, uh, because you've been here before, and others we never really talk a lot about. We've been recording most of our programs now for two years, around. Yeah. So we now have. 30, 30 odd discs of all the programs and we're really creating a, a oral history of the organization. But tonight we're also creating an oral history of Squirrel Hill by the commentary that's going to come out of this discussion. So I then we'll just do our thing and have fun and finish off the evening. So let me talk and I said this is going to be short, maybe eight minutes. So we're ready for the next slide and we're going to talk about the beginning. Um, Squirrel Hill was, to 
developed had pioneers here before the Revolutionary War. And there was the beginning. That is an old picture of the cabin in Chevy Park at the top of Gulf Coast Drive there. If you can see the folks a little bit, they have unusual hats on. That one, that photo is not dated, but it is one of the 12 original log cabins that were there. Um, the pioneers <coughs> did have a few schools, but schooling then was a lot like having a music teacher. You found somebody and they got paid kind of individually, and that was the little school. Pioneers really valued it, because if you think about the fact that there were no schools, and their children were growing up uncouth, uneducated, unable to read, unable to write their name, easily squandered, you know, what you call snookered, out of selling their land or selling their crops. If you don't know how much a bushel times something else is, there was a real value that they placed on it. So they did hire teachers. And some of the early, early pioneers, pioneers there having school in houses, um, one really old schoolhouse was built and used by a son of James Fleming. And that schoolhouse was a little brick schoolhouse that in 1880 was said to be run down on Forbes Avenue between Forbes and what is now Murray, a little red brick house covered with ivy, and that was where we taught. Um, so it, our beginning is not lots of details, of course, but if we take a 200-year leap from 1767 to 1867, and yet another one, another 200-year leap, 1867 is important because that's when Squirrelville became part of the Pittsburgh School District, and they began to have schools with set names. Now, a 200-year leap take is going to go, all right, we're not interested in the schools that disappeared, not too much. But if we leap from well, 1941, 1767 <coughs> to 1947, roughly 200 years, um, there is an article we have from the Squirrel Hill newspaper <coughs> saying that 6,000 children are going back to school this September the 11th. They're going back to school in these <coughs> schools. Um, and the reason that's a, a little interesting point is because in 1941, these were the schools that were considered Spurlock's <coughs> schools. Where was Roosevelt School? Roosevelt School is where the Giant Eagle, Giant Eagle was. <coughs> and later it became <coughs> Minadale oh, School. That they moved over. Yeah. So these, the Colfax, Roosevelt, and Linden were the ones that had really long <coughs> historical roots. 1867, we can try the next school. There we go. In 1867, when Squirrel Hill schools became part of the Pittsburgh schools, it was called the Colfax District. <coughs> and they had Colfax School 1, Colfax School 2, Colfax School 3. And the two that still were there in 1941 are the, are the, the descendants of Colfax 1. Colfax 1, let's say, well, the current Colfax is at the Phillips Avenue and Beachwood Boulevard. Right. Now, across the street from that, that was, the building before that was called Colfax number one. It was a wooden building and it was built around 1873. Before that, the early pioneer, James Fleming, his son, had a school in that area, probably in a house, probably across the street. If you notice that across the street from that little school, uh, Avenue School, is Frick Park. Part of that was the James Fleming land from the early pioneer times. So that, you know, when you look at the school's history, you see that they're kind of like built across the street, called it by the same name. Colfax number two. It is the precursor for Mid John Middale School, which is still in existence, right? Closed in 1901. Middale was built in 57. Yeah. And opened. Right. Or what was the number of years? Right. 
before that, the students all went to Roosevelt, which was where the current, where the current giant eagle had been. Before that, they went to Roosevelt number one, which is, I think, currently a church. So if you've got sort of those two strains, we've got some pictures of how those, so we start on the next one. Oh, yeah. Can yeah. I ask a question? Sure. Why wasn't Linden School on that list and also Wadley School? Well, because. Oh, I see what. All right, I see it. <laughs> okay. Well, these are also the schools that consider themselves to be a part of the Wolfsboro Hill District. We also have to say, for everybody here, I expect that we have even more schools, because these are only Pittsburgh public schools. So when we get moving, every school from around here that you went to is considered. Um, if you notice the back on that list, it said 3,000 students went to Taylor Overdice High School. Mm -hmm. That's a big number. And 6,000 students, I, th I think that I'm not positive because I didn't add up how the schools are broken up as to how many students today, but I think the whole group today would be not 6,000, but closer to 3,000. Davis School. Yes? Davis School is, what is the name of the health center? Shady Side Heritage. Heritage Health Center. Across from the Davis Playground. What? Hobart Street is Van Hobart. So the playground is on Hobart, and then Phillips is where the um, Shady Side Heritage is now. And that used to yeah. be a school building. Mm -hmm. Yes. Was the school where the nursing home is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they tore the school down and put the nursing home back 20 years ago. I see. Mm -hmm. So if we now go to the Colfax School that's on Phillips, this is the earliest picture we have of that. Uh, that Yes, it is. Helen Shuga, 
Mr. Someone Friedman, Susan Ferber, Ronald Stein, Flo Ann Householder, Barry Kaufman, and fourth row, finally, Beverly Someone, Stein Johnson, somebody unknown, Paul Kaufman, Harvey Stein, Ian Weisberger, uh, something Spillan, Bobby Kaufman, <coughs> Carl Ruder, Philip Erd, someone unknown, and Robert Hess. Probably that, that group would be in the late 60s now, like 68, 69 years old, I would think. Right, yes. Okay. We usually qualify with a few folks. <laughs> 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 Are there any notations about Colfax uh, having the very first scholars program? Did it really? Yes, led by a wonderful teacher named uh, Miss Strockler. Uh -huh. Strockler? And what was it called? The workshop. She started it, and that program then went to the other, you know, for the smart kids. About, what year, about what year was that? Oh, uh, let me think. Um, 50, early 50s. But she taught at Whiteman School, Miss Trotman. Oh, did she? Because yeah. we had one at Greensfield. Yeah, it's a great group. Okay. That's, that's our pictures from Colfax. Pictures from the precursor of Minadeo School. This is the original Roosevelt School, named oh, after yes. then President Theodore Roosevelt. Built in 18. Mm, 1885, I guess. Yeah. I have a notes there, but 18, 1885. This was a very primitive kind of school. It had a hot <coughs> stove in the center of the building for heat. Um, what street was that on? It was on Sunny Street and near Minadea. No, 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 no. Closer down, uh, three blocks away from the, music, the second Roosevelt School. Oh. So if you've got the on the and went down there almost in Beecher, right? Oh, Mom, you know where it was, talk. Ask my mother. Is that, <laughs> is she talking about the first one? This, yeah. that. that. Didn't that become the annex later church? on? Yes. They sold Beach, it to a church. Beechwood Chapel. It's on Beechwood Boulevard. Uh, Beechwood Celine. and Celine. Yeah. yeah. This is still there. Uh, yeah, that's that narrow that's street. street. That's still there. Yeah. That's still there. That's still there. Yeah. That's still there. 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 That's still now, so the school was, was kind of small, inadequate, poorly heated, so they built a newer school, bigger school. Now, the difficult part is, we have, we have no pictures, neither does the school board history of Roosevelt School. But it's that building on the far left on the top. And this is um, Murray. It's Murray Avenue? This is forward. Right. No, Murray. 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 Up there. See, there's a tree. Oh, yeah, I can visualize it being a school there, and they cut it down more level to make it the giant eagle today. Is that what a giant eagle is now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and what year is this picture taken? This was like 1929 when they put the trolley tracks in. Oh, 29. I didn't know what year that was. 29? No, no, I know. Because I'm, I'm I mean, you could be right. Because, because it looks so much earlier. It looks like earlier, maybe 1910s, because streetcar tracks were money for a long time. Well, they had streetcar tracks in various parts of school for a long time. Yeah, but I thought, we, well, I thought it was older. I don't know. I can't tell. Yeah, it looks like the road's not even paved or nothing, so it looks like it's before 1909. It looks like maybe 1909. That's I, might believe, I might believe 1909, except the school would be. The school would have been there in 1909. Or, or the 19-teens. 19-teens, it looked like the road? Yeah, because the way the road looks. I'll go to whatever. School district is not. And, and the photos, there are some photos here that we are. Some photos are the gift of the 
school board, and other photos are from the Pittsburgh Historical Society website, which we are only using for an educational purpose, so we don't have to pay. <laughs> um, so, so the school having been built, gotten big, then they went back to using the old Roosevelt Annex, the old school, for sort of like overflow for a while. Oh, did it? We had a gentleman here one evening who talked about going to school there as a boy and how tough it was because you had to sit around the pot belly stove in the winter time. <laughs> So then, uh, 1955, <laughs> they built the school they had been promising to build for 30 years, to John Minaday, the school that became John Minaday, and that's our next slide. Yeah, but that makes it look like they had to dig out the hillside, and it was flatter, so it now today was flat there. Well, there's that hillside behind that one. Is there? Yeah, yeah. Enter. So John Eagle looks flat level, level. Oh, and yeah, then the back of the stores yeah. are but the yeah. front looks all flat. You know what I mean? Yes. So they must have dug up a lot to make it, you know. I think. Yeah, it looks different than today. John Benaday was on Saline Street. You yeah. are looking at snow now. That's really mm -hmm. That's snow cover. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't originally named that. It wasn't until the boy got killed. They changed. What was the original name? They didn't have no. an original name. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. I'm guessing what? the sign says that it, it happened like two uh, years before the school yes. was completed. Oh, uh, he died? Yes. yes. I know. Two before. Oh, I thought he had another name. Did it have a name? Miller's Field. Miller's Field. Field. Okay. And for years you heard, that belongs to the Board of Education. You know, finally, in 1959, it was Miller's Field between Lilac Street and then the bottom of Lilac Street. We have another shot of John Mendeleev. Where it is. Why did they change the name? Well, a little boy, the school board was run over and killed, and they named it after him. His name was John Mendeleev. Yeah. He he was crossing kids across the street, and then a car without brakes came barreling down the hill. It was at Gladstone School. Uh -huh and a car came barreling down the hill and he had just crossed the little girl and he ran out into the street to grab the kids back and the little girl ended up in a coma but she survived and he died. Oh, but he was mm -hmm. There's a wonderful plaque inside. We used to reenact that every year at Minadeo. If you were in sixth grade you got to reenact it on the loudspeaker. It was kind of wow. weird reenacting somebody's <laughs> death. <laughs> but, and, and we all said, greater love hath no man than this, that he lay mm -hmm. down his life for his friends, which is a biblical quote. He was very quote. young. And he was very young. He was in grade he school. Roosevelt school. He might know what year it is. Stanley, you know about old pictures, don't you? Not a little bit, but he was, never did. Not yeah, it was in Murray Avenue with the tracks. Do you know what year they played track on Murray Avenue down by Greenfield? No, I didn't have a record of that. I've got you know about that. The only thing I might have something on that. He'll show the track. He has his atlas and I show what year they had track yeah, on Murray Avenue. Yeah, what year it was. He might have okay. He had old pictures. He was. He was safety patrol. Nineteen oh nine. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. We'll wait till later. Gym class. Oh, really? Ah. And another one. This I know is nineteen seventies. Nineteen seventies. Thought you would do it. I don't think you could do that today. Right. Yeah. You couldn't do what today? Deer into the water. Oh, just like that. Like the monkey? Yes. Like the monkey? Yes. Okay. Okay, now Linden School. How many historical roots does Linden School have? Linden School is close to Edgerton Avenue, right? In before Squirrel Hill. Was part of the city way back when the school district stretched from the Allegheny to the Monongahela outside in Liberty Borough, and they had three schools. They decided they would build a little wooden school near Edgerton Avenue for the small children, obviously walking six miles, eight miles to go to school. They built one there, it was small, it was wooden. After that, 
they had, I don't, I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about it in the school's history, but this is 1928. They had, they had a small piece of the building early on. Uh, but then, this is the major construction in 1928, and it's a lot like what it looks like today. Yeah, but it's considered, it was, in 1941, considered school buildings. We should have met in White and School tonight. Here's the, so here's the construction of white men. If you look, if you look, you can see it. This is before the lockers go in, and then the next one is is the lockers in. Okay, the 19. There's a half a day on there. What's that? 28. Okay. How about the cloakrooms? I don't remember the lockers. No. How about the cloakrooms? Oh, Linda Bell. I'm sorry. Okay, it's good. Like, <laughs> so we can see the seat on it. Oh. Okay. Okay, there, that is, and we have a date on there, March 1920. It looks the same now. Yeah. Sort of like it looks today. They are Okay, let's see what schools we have next. Let's see what schools we have next. Let's just go. Yeah, H.P. Davis School. Everybody knows where that was? Is. Yeah. Okay. Davis School was built as just an elementary school, just for grades one, kindergarten, one, two, three, with, at that time, the decision that, okay, after you got out, when you get to fourth and fifth grade, you went over to Lincoln School. And we have about four shots of the construction there, which would be. Does, does anybody know who was H.P. Davis? Oh, uh, I should. Yeah, you know, you shouldn't, but I wonder if anyone else does. No, it doesn't anyone. Yeah. No. And we have schools after, well, now. Shiler Colfax was the vice president of the United States at one point. That was Colfax. Colfax School was named after. So 1931 is being constructed. my late husband's, it was one of his high school reunions, his 30th or his 40th, I ended up next to my third grade teacher. Wow. <laughs> this is so awesome. <laughs> um, someone asked who yeah. Davis was, yeah. yes. and according in the, um, in the Squirrel Hill book actually, um, in, under the 
a couple of photos ago, the caption says that um, it was Dr. H.B. Davis, who is the principal of the Henry Clay Frick Training School for Teachers at the time. So they named it after him. So was that Mr. Davis? Davis? Dr. Davis. Was it the principal of a Henry Clay Frick Training School? I see. The training School for Teachers at the time. And where was that? Was that Henry Clay Frick Training School somewhere in Pittsburgh? Um, yeah, it's correct. Right. It's, it's an Frick school. school. It's it's school. It's it's school. School. It was in Colfax for a while. Pictures and never brought them back, so I had to write sign my bl in blood. Sign in blood, <laughs> and you did return every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> may I mention something? Probably with Alderdice being built around that time, that might have been more of an incentive for Jewish families from 50, 60 miles radius yeah. to have the incentive to move into Squirrel Hill because of, because of this new high school. Wow. I mean, I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but it makes sense. And the reason it makes sense to me is that with my father's side of the family, they lived on the south side, and there was a big difference between a certain group of kids and the youngest. So sometime probably around that time, then they moved in, into Squirrel Hill. Okay. Community that had everything that they wanted to yeah. be a great education. Mm -hmm. Well, it was primarily Jewish. Was it? Yeah. Our next one is, you, you probably would all be able to name what the next there's a theater in there? Yeah? Sure. Yeah? Okay. And that's it. Sort of finished picture. Alder Dice was such a striking 
and well-designed school that there are postcards of. You have, you have one of those, Michael, don't you? And probably, here's the next shot. You know, this is 1927, right? It's a, there's trees away. Yeah, well, they started They took the lawn away. <laughs> Because the next shot of the hill, I'm sorry, that's a whole neck class from 1928. Oh, Everybody's dresses on. The pressure hasn't hit. No, the pressure hasn't hit. It still hasn't hit. 1930, they're adding on to it. I don't think they ever stopped. <laughs> and the block is just about a kill point, isn't it? Now, all the other schools, and I would just ask. Well, we'll do this in a minute because I don't want you to think that's the only schools we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about every school that you went to. When did the Catholic school start? 1920s, I think. Yeah, there, there were Sage Rosalias. Green And, and, and St. Philomena's. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here's the second half of our program. Moral history is all about, you know, that's Mark Fish. I'll never make my notes. They're 62, 63. These gentlemen sent the photo to the Spurville website. Do you have a name? I'll put a little bit. Move it up a little. David Parker, I think it's Richard Zellaw. Yes. Richard Zellaw. 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 The picture was taken in 2004 at the Allison Park home of Dave Parker. They were all in town for the 40th reunion of the Taylor Organized High School class. That's 40th. 50th. That's 40th. 40th. And they were 58 that. Yeah, they were like 63 now. Maybe about 65, 66 right now. 63. 63. Five years. 63. Thank you. 
you can, you know, we've done, I need to just take each of your photos. And you just, just tell, tell her your name and hold up your school name. That should be enough. <laughs> Who knows how we're going to be able to cut and slice this, right, Audrey? Right. right. I didn't go to school. Yes, you did go here. to school. You taught here, and you're going to contribute. So hold your flag. So you can put your flag. Did you teach at an individual school? I was in charge of the deprived for the city of Pittsburgh, and did all the programs for all the children with reading and problems. That's what we went to. It was during the Johnson administration. We had a lot of supplemental money that we put in, and we worked in five areas: Homewood, Hazelwood, uh, North North Hills. May we ask your name? We tried. Can I'm we Vicky put you? Goldzer, and uh, the kids all complained from the stink from the steel mill. <laughs> was everybody able to hear Vicky? Oh, well. That's sure. One or two or three. Gotcha. I have another straight lady. Do I need my name? Tell me your name and tell what you would like to tell. My name is Sandy Oker and I went to Colfax and all the Okay. Got that? My maiden name is Lewis. Okay, say what uh, My maiden name was Lewis. Sandy Lewis. She was at school. Sandy Lewis. 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 Bell. And do you want to tell something about the school? Let him come Any school? Oh, would you? Not sure what's the story. They should do it up front. Okay. Just leave it like that. We'll get. Okay. I know. Uh, You'll think about it. Okay, Audrey, can we get you to stand in the center and then the people just can come up to you and hopefully sure. you don't both hear you on both sides? Sure. Does that work? Just mind the way as we through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a roving retreat. That's right. Are you going to hold up your St. Phil and then talk to us? You want our name? Let me, let My me. name? Or just yeah, yeah, I mean, if I'm here, like I'm really too close. Because these folks are dying to be out. That's okay. right. I'm Martha Cordick Shanley. went to St. Philomena's in the early 40s. We started with 44 kids in the class, and we ended up with 44 kids almost the same. Taught by nuns who made, I think, a dollar a week. Because we paid no tuition, just bought your books. Uh, let's see. Uh, we had ten nuns, one was a cook, one was a music teacher, and one for every grade. Uh, the edifice is still there. The Jewish Education Institute uh, bought it, took it over, and uh, beautiful green grass. We had the field was, you know, dirt, complete dirt. They did um, put water on the park the one parking lot during the winter for ice skating the firemen would come put the water and um, everybody would go ice skating free you know open you'd leave your shoes inside the church now the custodian when it was time to lock up would throw all the shoes outside <laughs> but you know part of growing up <laughs> it's saint philomena's Yes, we had a huge, huge all-year reunion, and uh, it was just terrific. There were, you know, about 600 people there, just everybody, you know. Since it's closed, you know, a lot of nostalgia. So thank you for listening. <laughs> More stories. Okay. No? Mm -hmm. Well, show your sign. Show your sign. Tell mm -hmm. us who you are. Ann Alter. I went to H.P. Davis and Whiteman, and they were wonderful schools. I love them. Okay. Helen Wilson. I taught at Linden for eight years, and I discovered while I was there that it was 90 years old. So we had a 90th anniversary celebration. And David McCullough came to talk because he went there. I think he graduated or was promoted in 35. The interesting thing was we were looking for the box of memorabilia 
that was in the closet and it was gone, but when people found out we were asking about it, it suddenly reappeared. And after the um, celebration, we donated it, the memorabilia to the History Center, which, by the way, has a Pittsburgh Public Schools um, archive at the History mm -hmm. Center. It's a wonderful school. Mm -hmm. I was at that celebration, and and that was a wonderful evening. But were you at that night? Because they didn't invite me to the hundred. Oh well, no, I'm not sure when I. I, I mean, but but the one the one at the school, which could have been about 10, 12 years ago. Well, the ninetieth was the one with David McCullough. Yeah. Well, then that's the one that I went to. It was a huge speaker. crowd, yeah. and it was such a treat to yes, be there to hear him. Did David McCullough go to, to Linden? Yes. Yes, and mm -hmm. then he went on all to Shady his, Side. All the, all the McCulloughs. We found every class picture except his. Somebody had gotten to it. Hmm. Must have had a good English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and history teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm Yale Co, and I went to Greenfield and Paradise. I remember in Greenfield, we always went home for lunch, except uh, a couple times during the year we would stay in and they would, we'd have hot dog day, where they'd buy hot dogs and orange drink and I think potato chips, and that was always a treat. Other than that, I always went home. Um, and all our dice, I was in, in, I guess, in late 60s, early 70s, all the turmoil that was existing in those days. And all the good times and all the good teaching. Uh, Greenfield at that time went from kindergarten to ninth grade, uh, but if you got into the scholars program in eighth grade, you went to honor days. So I had, I had siblings that were in Greenfield and on and all days, depending on the ages, even the older siblings. Yeah, so. How'd you get to school? Walked. Everybody. I walked. I walked to Greenfield. I walked to Alderdice pretty much all the time too. And I lived in Greenfield. It was a long beach with Boulevard and up forward. Mm -hmm. Did you was walk it? home for lunch every day no, from no, Greenfield? Alderdice, Alderdice, no, from yeah. Greenfield. Yeah. You know, yeah. Greenfield. We always walked home and walked back and played in the playground. I was on safety patrol, and I was had to get back early for safety patrol, and so I couldn't play on play, the playground, which was okay. That's pretty far. Because we were saving. It's all those hills. No matter where you live in Greenfield, you're oh, going uphill sure. one yeah, way. Yeah. Squirrel right. Hill. Well, Squirrel when you go down, yeah, yeah, actually it's both ways. It's an anchor. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's an anchor yeah. walk. You're always going up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Next, volunteer. Uh, Roberta Weiss. I went to Davis School, Colfax, and Alderdice. And, and I remember in those days, then I started kindergarten because they didn't have nursery school. Davis School had an afternoon kindergarten and a morning kindergarten. So I started kindergarten when I was, I remember knowing three and three quarters years old. Wow. And, and, and one thing that I remember from Alderdice because when uh, you went to Alderdice in those days. It started in the seventh grade, mm -hmm. and it was a few years, maybe three or four years after the end of World War II. Then the annex at Alderdice had the veterans that were completing their high school education, but you were completely segregated. You you just never ran ran into them. You got I also went to Alderdice. <laughs> My name is Jack Markowitz. And I remember uh, it was a very well equipped school. The boys had four shops a uh, print shop, a uh, wood shop, uh, electric shop, and machine shop. The girls had cooking and sewing in the early grades. And Alderdice had at that time, I'm sure, five bands, five orchestras, that is B, C, D, you know, and there'd be the concert band or the concert orchestra. And students in those days were offered instruments free 
This was about uh, 1943, 44, around there. And there, was, there were very good musicians at Alderdice, one of whom was Myron Cope, the eventual sportscaster. He was an excellent <laughs> clarinetist in school. And, uh, uh, and it was a great opportunity for anybody to learn musical instruments. They had a terrific chemistry teacher uh, who was very proud of the fact that over the years something like a hundred of his <coughs> students had become doctors or PhDs in some scientific Men field. His name. his name was Colburn and he lived to a hundred. I saw him years and years later. He was a hundred years old living in a nursing home up in Grove City. Uh, blind then, but still very, very sharp. Uh, it had a great faculty. They weren't paid especially well. The unions were, teachers' unions were nothing, if, if they existed at all. And the education was excellent. Go figure that out. <laughs> How was the discipline? Very good, because you would be severely punished for uh, misbehaving, including being paddled by the vice principal or one of the coaches, and so you behaved. You tended to behave better, I do believe. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Who was the principal and vice principal? Well, the, the great principal of our time, his name was McClymans, Mr. McClymans. I think the vice principal was Mr. Thomas. They had a good staff. Okay, wait, then I want to say then the principal, no, no. <laughs> the, 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 the principal of Colfax when I was there was Miss Pregler. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you knew her. Yeah, she was very well known there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. A tough, but very fine, Miss uh, Pregler, no, she wasn't. Tough. She was tough, but she was, <laughs> she was not cruel. Okay. <laughs> but she, had, she, she was a lady who believed in discipline. Oh, wait, wait, wait. May I mention something else about Colfax? Because Colfax had a swimming pool, so you had to go swimming. I, mean, I don't know whether it was once a week, and you you had and they supplied the they were gray tank bathing suits yes. mm -hmm. and and you couldn't go into the pool I mean you had to stand in line with the bathing suit tied around your neck before you put it on and girls <laughs> at that age are very modest so it was something that you weren't comfortable in doing but if if that's the way they did it then you had no choice you weren't going to rebel they had huge graduating classes at Alderdice. It was a very big school. So the graduation had to be on two nights in our time. I was class of 49. And Mr. McClymans wore a tuxedo to the graduation. It was something to, to be a high school graduate. High school graduate meant success, right? <laughs> no, seriously. Those mm -hmm. days, most of the older days graduates were either physicians or lawyers. There would be, you know, 25, 30 kids going to med school. I don't know, but we still have reunions every five or ten years, and they're pretty well attended from all over the country. Mom, are you going to talk about? Was it say? I went to Roosevelt for four years, from the first grade through the fifth, I skipped two semesters, <laughs> um, and one year in Colfax, and from seventh grade on to Alderdice. What's your name? Rosalie <laughs> Did we get everyone else's name? I think. I think so. And, and uh, of all of them, I can a uh, actually say that I like Roosevelt the best. It was, uh, they didn't have a kindergarten when I went, I went right into first grade. And it, I had, I think it was in the fourth grade, we went to the annex 
There were two classes in the annex, mm -hmm. just two classes, which is fine. Uh, it, it seemed like a um, uh, an easygoing crew there, the teachers, but um, you learned. You, you really learned. But t tell me, can you tell us a little bit more about the Roosevelt School you went to? I'm sorry. Well, the Roosevelt School that you went to was the one that's above the trolley tracks. Yes. Yes, it was, yeah, up on the on hill. On Murray. Right, so the and, hill. Uh, Greenfield was behind it. Greenfield's behind and, and it. And that was the hill, and it was on, we had steps going up okay. into the school. Yeah. It was, it was a, an oddly laid out building because it would go, when you went in, you would go up, a, there were rooms on the first floor, and then there was a stairway all the way up. And at the top of the stairway was another couple of rooms up there. I'm not sure whether the principal was up there or not, but somebody was. So kind of being built in a couple stages. Well, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I don't know how it was built, but it was, it was a, uh, not a very large school, it was more like a, a family type thing. Everybody knew everybody, no matter what grade they were in, it was, it was nice. <laughs> May I just say something real quick mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. because you mentioned, or we were talking about discipline, then uh, there were two teachers that were sisters. One was at Colfax and the other one was at Alderdice. The two Miss Steiners. And then Miss Steiner at Alderdice was a, what, a choral director. And the one at Colfax was a, a very, very strict teacher. And if you were caught chewing gum because chewing gum and bubble gum was so popular that I mean, was during World War II. And if you had bubble gum, you, you were lucky and, and you held on to it because you could hardly get it. And if you were caught chewing any kind of gum in Miss Steiner's class, and if she caught you, you had to put it on your nose. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of discipline. Mm -hmm. um, my late husband, uh, I think he graduated in 53, at, from Alderdice, um, put Limburger cheese in the radiator. So they had to close down the classroom for the rest of the year. The teacher cried and she told his mother, I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> and then so, someone else tried to take credit for doing this at one of his reunions. But that was, this was Herb's, definitely Herb's idea. <laughs> there were a lot of cultural uh, opportunities at the uh, at Alderdice. I remember once the Carnegie, then Carnegie Tech Dramatic School sent over a production of The Taming of the Shrew by Shakespeare. This, after all, to a high school. It was an absolutely terrific production. And the, the audience of high school students really got it. It's a very physical play and a funny play. And I think may very well have turned on a lot of students to Shakespeare. And it just happened to be a... Uh, and the Pittsburgh Symphony came around to Alderdice. Uh, and probably to other high schools as well. Uh, and once Pittsburgh had its own famous violinist who went on to Hollywood and elsewhere. His name was Rubinoff. Rubinoff and his violin. He lives, his house is still standing right on the corner of Whiteman and Ford. Mm -hmm. And anyway, he came to Alderdice one day, and I remember Mr. McClymans himself went around to the classes and said, bring him down to the auditorium. You know, it, it was a surprise visit, and there was the great Rubinoff playing for a full <coughs> auditorium of high school students who never expected that in the middle of the day. Terrific. Anything yeah. about smoking at Older Dice? Oh, <laughs> the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many generations do we think that people smoked at the wall? Yeah. Well, not so much in my time. 
Oh. What wall? It's too long ago. Is the wall still there? Yes. Sure. Well, what is, but, what's but they, more they or didn't less. have the parking lot the way they have it now. I, I think there was much more room for the students to. There was plenty of room for people at the wall, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> I, I, when she mentioned her, her sister teachers, it reminded me that at Roosevelt there was there were two. One was the principal, women. One was the principal, and one was a teacher. And what, what was their name? Blessing. What? Blessing. Mrs. Miss Blessing. I don't, I don't know the first names. It was Miss Blessing and Miss Blessing. <laughs> <laughs> they were very nice. Did you guys go to school in Scrow Hill? No. No, no. no. Fox Chapel. Mm -hmm. uh, who went to Fox Chapel? Okay. <laughs> Are you on a school project? Uh, well, actually, I am the representative from John E. Hall that okay. uh, Mike had mentioned earlier. Okay. So I was just. We actually, sorry, we actually have to get going. Um, sorry to interrupt. Yes. That. Well, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, but how are you the representative from John Eagle? Uh, well, I work with John Eagle's history, and uh, um, and uh, I was. Uh, Mike had contacted us about doing a presentation. Well, here, wait. The upcoming season. Well, wait, then, then let, <laughs> let, let me mention something to you because if you're working with John Eagle history, because then this could have been 1949, 1950, then there were different men who were the founders of John Eagle, and one was Weizenbaum. And, and I remember walking, um, I guess, on Murray Avenue with Rose Weisenbaum and one or two other girls. And, it, and we passed the Giant Eagle, which was where Eaton Park is now. And, uh, and Rose said, let's go in. I think she might have said, my father owns that, and I don't think we knew that. And she said, <laughs> I'll get you apples. So then, then I think she got us all a piece of fruit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story. Any more Squirrel Hill School people? Oh, you, you count. Well, yes. Central Catholic counts. Central Catholic counts. Yeah. Yeah. Count. <laughs> we have Winchester Thurston back there. Winchester Thurston back there. Where's your sign? I, I didn't go to school in Squirrel Hill. Well, well you can talk about, about your school. I went to Holy Rosary in Homewood a thousand years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I went to Central, and then I went to Morris Harvey. And I would like to ask this fellow here, the, you seem to be the oldest one here. I <laughs> My mother's thanking you. <laughs> I, uh, you said you graduated in 1949. Correct. But I'd be interested in what uh, wartime Taylor Allardyce was like. Uh, like you said, 43. I thought maybe you went to school in 43. Started in 43, and uh, I can remember one thing there was, was uh, blood drives. Okay. They actually uh, uh, had students uh, donate blood. In school? At school. At a certain point, I think you had to be 16 or so. And a, 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 a person of that age can donate blood. They had very successful blood drives at all their days. Where'd you hang out after school? Was there a place home. to go? Oh, you went home. <laughs> or you had a job or something, that's right? You didn't hang out. Was there a teenage place where people went uh, had a drink or a Tom, I mean, pop or something? Rosen, my drugstore. Right? Oh, okay. Rosen. There were places, you know, drugstores that had soda fountains yeah, and so soda fountain. But they weren't especially great hangouts, I don't think. Bowling, pool? No? I don't remember that. She would say something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she would add something to it after she gives it to me also. Wait, Abby. I went to Alderdice 
and my mother would make my lunches, and, and my homeroom teacher was the same last name as mine. And so my f friends would tease me because I had the same last name and as my homeroom <coughs> teacher, and she was black, and I'm not. <laughs> And she, her last name was Lewis, and my last name was Lewis. Okay. <laughs> and my mother would make lunches for me. My friends would call them bottomless lunches. Because <laughs> she would wrap everything in, in um, what's that called, uh, plastic bags. Paper mm bags. -hmm. One little Thank thing you. about Alder Dice in the, um, mm -hmm. in the 60s, my neighbors told me that when they went, um, seventh, it was 7th through 12th Yes. Mm -hmm. those days, mm -hmm. so um, you can't imagine where they put all these kids, but um, they swore, I said, can't be, there were too many kids, oh yeah, 7th to 7th. We had 4,100 kids there when I went, I graduated in 74, and during that time we averaged one year there was 4,100, and it didn't fluctuate much less than that in any of those years. Now it's different. Well, I also, also wanted to say they that some people are saying now. that uh, in those days there were doctors graduating, whatever. But my sons were at Alderdice graduates, I think 2000 and 2002. And a lot of the kids from those classes have become doctors and engineers. So it's the tradition's mm -hmm. continuing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, how many favorite? How many famous people went to all dice? Yeah, Besides the guy he mentioned, Marty Allen. Yeah, yeah I mean, you have a list of all the famous people? Um, no. Iris Rainer Dart. Mm -hmm. How many people that are famous besides those two? Mike may well have that on one of his lists. Mike, what I believe Gene Kelly Gene was an older dice. Oh, was he? Peabody. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. Going to Marty Allen, he lives in Vegas. Marty Allen. Who else was famous? Myron Cook. Who else? You know? I'm not sure of that. He was a class of 40. I remember that reading the paper. Uh -huh. So he was a class of 40. Yeah. So he, he was just came here. Surprise visitor. Uh -huh. <laughs> and who else? Uh, I don't know. That guy you mentioned. There were some other famous people. But I don't know. Edgar Snyder. Edgar Snyder. Who? Edgar Snyder. Edgar Snyder. I just saw him last week, too. I just saw him. I just saw him last week. Did he go to all the nice? Uh, did he go to all this? I'm guessing he did. I, I don't know. know. <laughs> His daughter did. We have yeah, another and, speaker. And they lived on Hogwarts Street, not oh, far yeah. from Shelley Park. Uh, on the higher side. Okay. Okay. This guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to mention I'm going to Central Catholic. Yeah. And the thing is with Central is that it's in postal zones. Thir uh, 13, 13, considering Oakland, but if you look at the map, it's in the 14th Ward. So it's a little yeah. confused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the media gets everything confused because they keep referring to as Oakland, and Oakland basically ends at Neville, uh, right before it hits Central, in terms of the wards. But the post office goes a few blocks further, and it's, when you, you mail something to them, you've got to say 15213. So it's in that no man's area. Is that, is and that's why. No, Shadyside's on the other side of Fifth Avenue. Oh, I was wondering that. And that's what gets everybody confused. So the Square Hill goes all the way down to CMU, right? Yeah, CMU's the, the line. Yeah, I was wondering how far it went up that one. And I graduated in 1970. My name's John Busack. And uh, the, th the interesting thing about Central, they started the school in 1927. And they took in everybody that lived between the Allegheny River and the Monongahela River all the way out to Wilkinsburg and even Penn Hills uh, for students. And if you were Catholic and you wanted a Catholic education, you went, and you lived between the two rivers, you ended up going to Central. So there was a lot of uh, students in Central that lived in Squirrel Hill. Sure. Uh, especially out of It was free. Yeah. And, oh, you uh, mean it was free at one It was free. Time. The parishes paid uh, for every kid. Yeah, they paid so much. Yeah. And then eventually, uh, you paid a, a, a little bit uh, later on. I know when I graduated, the total bill was $190. And that included the cap and gown and my uh, yearbook. 
Wow. This is $7,400 now. And what happened is, with that is it, it, I, when I went there, it was like 90-95% 90, LaSalle brother teachers. Now it's the other way around with lay teachers. And uh, the lay teachers want the cash. <laughs> but uh, we, and as far as discipline goes, a good example of this is that I, when I started in 1966 as a freshman, we had 464 students. When I left in 1970, it was down to 328. And a, a small percentage moved away. Another big percentage got left because of failing grades and the, what was left got thrown out, expelled. Or couldn't afford for, it. For discipline problems. And that could have been anything because I remember one time I was in a biology class in my sophomore year and this one student he did something or got smart with somebody or whatever and the teacher grabbed him by his shirt because we all had to wear shirt and ties and a suit jacket. He grabbed him by his shirt and slammed him up against the wall and chewed him out. <laughs> he was gone the next couple of days. So. Uh. Uh, in full round. <laughs> well, we need we we got one more thing to video. Uh -huh. Oh, that's, you brought Sorry. this, right? That's, that's that one's mine. Okay. All right, bring it on. There you go. This, this, this is Minadeo of more recent vintage. This is in the 90s. 90s. I did have one when I was We're little in Minadeo, but. We don't know where it is. So you're going to be wrapping up in a minute, but when I went to Boulder, Colorado High School, so I don't contribute directly to this, but I'd like to read a message that, that Betty and the rest of us got. Could, we'll be finished in a minute. I regret I cannot attend as much as my heart would like. I haven't been back since 1957, so I'm sure the topography has changed considerably. I lived at 6333, Moorfield Avenue. I went to St. Philomena's Catholic School for grade school, then attended Taylor Alderdice. Entered the Air Force in 1950, served three years in Germany, returned in August 1954. I attended the aircraft maintenance school at the county airport and was hired by United Airlines in Chicago Midway in 1957. I haven't been back since, but hope to before I die. I'm 78 years young and still in pretty good health. I have a lot of memories. I was a paper boy when in high school delivering the press. Then I operated a newsstand on Forbes and Murray Corner for a few months. Some of you may remember oh, yeah. that. Sure enough. I delivered the newspaper to Murray Dixon and Dave Dahlgren of the Pirates. I'm a devoted fan of the Steelers and I hope for another ring. Hope I don't bore you but I would pay someone to take a picture of my home on Marfield, which will do for him. I live in the mountains where I see deer, wild turkeys, a bear now and then, and mountain lions. We get snow, but not so much. It's beautiful now and very peaceful. May the good Lord bless you all. His name is Joseph Petrisco. Oh, Joe Petrisco. I know Joe. <laughs> What's the St. Philomena's with Joe? There we go. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and, and one That's, more, a final I comment. A little happy yeah. story. Okay, we have a that. Uh, you know how important Squirrel Hill, is a, Squirrel Hill is as a community? Well, my oldest son is 60, and when he said order dice, and he ran for president of the student council or any officer, Every bakery on Murray Avenue, and there was about 10 or 11, would have big cakes in their window saying, go for Goldzer, go for Smith, go. And it was that kind of community where they gave the students a lot of support and lots of feeling of terrificness. And Vicki coordinates each year light up night, which this year will be Tuesday, August 4th, and on blocks all over Squirrel Hill. Make sure to support your block group. 
uh, and participate in that event. It's a very important year for your neighbors to be connected. And if we don't have any more newspapers, you better get your block up it's going on August 4th because you won't know when somebody died or had a baby unless you have a block up. And when you talk to somebody or tomorrow, you say, uh, if you, tomorrow when you think about it, you say, I forgot to tell them this about school. Just go to Squirrel Hill Historical Society website. Okay. Put it down there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.